Hey Zui, write a story where listeners being bullied. Hey Zui, write a story where listeners being bullied. Hey Zui, write a listener where being bullied and then Bakugo story. These are unironic comments that I've been getting a lot of recently and, and I'm like, you know what? Fine. Let's get right into it, my darlings. Today I wrote to you a Kirishima story after your weird mishmash of uh, words wanting me to write a story where listeners being bullied. Well, listeners being bullied now. Good job. <laughs> this is your fault. <laughs> you, <laughs> you made me bully listeners. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> um. I hope you enjoy the story. Please remember to watch the video until the end, like or dislike it, and comment something down below. Share the video around if you think it's worth sharing around. If you're new here and think I'm worth being subscribed to, please subscribe and hit the bell icon. The bell icon is very, very important. It's getting more important by the day. Oh my god. Uh, no, seriously, there's this one YouTuber that uh, I've been watching for a very long time and suddenly I thought, huh, he stopped uploading and then I Google him and I'm like, oh my god, I missed five videos. Five videos. Remember to hit the bell. Very, very important. Lastly, I'm also okay if you share video clips of this video. Video clips of this video. If you share clips of this video around anywhere, just remember to link to my stuff and share it anywhere. I know there's like a sharing function on Twitter. Just copy paste the link into, into, into your Twitter with a couple of hashtags or post it in a Discord that you're in. Whatever, please, just help a guy out. Let's get right into the story. This, this intro has been long enough. In the world of quirks, people were used to certain sights. Businessmen with pumpkin heads, police officers with four arms, or someone like you. While admittedly less drastic than being a talking plant, it was bothersome. And it was hair. Not just any kind of hair. Thick, white tufts that, if not properly taken care of, would cover your entire body. Not only did this mean that you were prone to overheating in the summer, but also made you appear very overweight. Well, maybe you did have a little chub, but who didn't nowadays? What was pretty neat about your wool, though, was the ability to absorb kinetic energy. This meant that your cotton-like hair could be used for hero costumes and gadgets. For shock protection. This was probably the reason why the faculty of UA had decided to make you an honorary student at first, while deciding where to put you. Since you were a special case. Your quirk wasn't offensive enough to be worthy of the hero course. You weren't technically knowledgeable for the support course, but you are also too valuable to be put in general studies. And you definitely weren't smart enough to become a business hero, so the management course was also not for you. This put you in a strange limbo. And even had Principal Nezu consider opening up a course specifically for mutation quirk users who are valuable to society, but in the most indirect way possible. But after a rather arduous journey through UA's legal system, you were eventually put into the support course, where you were also immediately declared an outcast. You were pushed around by most of your fellow classmates. Lucky for you, everyone was well aware of what would happen if you were actually bullied. So no one outright hurt you or insulted you. But outside of sharing your wool, you had no real interactions with anyone. And despite your hair being pearly white, they just called you Black Sheep and pretended you chose that as your hero name. You sighed. As per usual, you were sitting alone in the cafeteria. It had quickly become obvious to you that your classmates managed to keep an entire seat empty 
despite the large amount of students and limited room space. You still had no idea how they managed that. At least lunch rush food was better than what you got at home. Your mother had the tendency to undercook stuff, only to then call it firm to the bite. Not to mention her overuse of salt. This made any meal not given out by her a blessing. Worst of all, was that she even watched dinner... Worst of all was that she even watched Diner Nightmares, which was literally a show about saving diners from their own terrible menus, owners and managers. While you were focused on your food and comparing it to your mom's lackluster cooking, you didn't notice what was happening behind you. Someone from your class was inciting a student from 1B of the hero course by telling him you were badmouthing him and his classmates. With an angry scrawl, the blonde turned around, while the other fled to his friend group. And like a petty child, he grabbed a glob of mashed potatoes from his food tray and threw it at your face. The hot liquefied vegetable crashed into the back of your head suddenly, and the force threw your head onto the plate. For a moment you were quiet. In fact, the entire cafeteria was quiet. Until someone shouted, FOOD FIGHT! Around you now began loud shouting, noises of splashing food, with an occasional student screaming profanities, while trying desperately to calm down the situation. You, on the other hand, just laid there, your entire head covered in gross mush. Eventually, you put up the courage to raise your head. And like in a trance, you walked out of the chaotic scene like a ghost, into a nearby bathroom where you washed your face and the back of your head. In truth, you were glad someone declared a food fight. This saved you the embarrassment of being laughed at. With tears in your eyes, you left the bathroom. The echoing noises of the still-going-on battle floated around the halls. And eventually you found a nice spot in a rarely used hallway. To cry. It was really difficult for you to not wallow in self-pity. Being self-conscious about everything like you were created a downward spiral of sadness pretty much all the time. For one, you felt bad then you felt bad for feeling bad. Then you felt embarrassed for feeling bad that you were feeling bad. Which then rebound in your head. Well, at least being self-conscious prevented you from strutting around like a prideful turkey. Your silent sobs were interrupted by approaching footsteps. A single pair. Heavy. Accompanied by a mushy sound. Probably someone who just left the cafeteria. However, whomever it was, was also out of breath. They stopped next to you. <laughs> Ooh, quite a fight, eh? They asked. It was a male voice. The same one that had shouted food fight. The boy chuckled. Ah, too bad you missed how I threw spoiled and mushy iceberg salad at Manamoa. He remained quiet, the guy obviously not taking the hint, chuckled to himself and slid down the wall next to you. You know, when I saw him do that to you, he spoke in a softer tone, declaring the food fight was the only way to avoid you being humiliated further. He paused and audibly shuffled. You alright? His voice sounded genuinely caring. Do I look like I'm alright was what you wanted to desperately shout at him. But your body disobeyed and you just kept sitting there. The boy sighed and the quiet bonk indicated that he leaned the back of his head against the wall. I've been watching how they treat you. Thought it's some kind of phasing thing, but... 
Sailing him on a mower after you took a step too far. The guy's a complete sociopath. The boy paused. Well, despite that, I'm glad he's on the hero side of things. Can you imagine him being a villain? Sheesh. Suddenly he touched your hand and you resisted the urge to pull it back. His thumb gently ran across the back of it. The boy raised an eyebrow. Despite you shaving your hand, there was an adorable soft tuft of hair covering it. <laughs> you little sheep, huh? He asked while grinning. You puffed up your cheeks and you knew he didn't mean it as an insult, but the possibility that it still was one was still there. But the possibility that it was one was there. So you raised your head and looked at him. The boy had spiky red hair. His toothy grin revealed sharp teeth. And his crimson eyes were focused on yours. Look, there is something you need to understand, he said. A broken arm or leg is painful, but heals in time. A broken heart is miserable, but emotions come and go. But if you let these guys get to you, well, a broken mind is terrifying. Your lips quivered. He could tell you were reaching a breaking point. <laughs> Name's Kirishima. Ejiro Kirishima. You told him yours. See, you can talk after all. <laughs> he chuckled lightly before sighing. <sighs> I know. Bad attempt at raising the moon, ain't it? He turned his gaze away from you towards a window you two were sitting behind of. So, you watched me for a while? You asked after a long moment of quiet. Yeah, creepy, I know. Sorry. Kushima said and then scratched the back of his head. But hey, can a guy have trouble approaching someone? You simply shrugged. I mean, the way I see it, you started. At the start of school, people quickly find their friend groups. And they act all hostile if anyone tries to encroach on that. He nodded. Eh, I agree. You sighed. Uh, you know what's the worst thing about this? You looked at him and he returned his attention to you. This is just school. This is nowhere near close to how it will be in the future. When we are forced to become adults. Well, he said. There is sort of a way. <laughs> if you become a hero. You deadpanned and he chuckled. <laughs> I know, I know. Not everyone can become a pro hero. You shrugged. Nature's gift, I guess. You looked away, feeling dejected. When suddenly you felt a weight coming down on your shoulder as he leaned into you. <laughs> You're pretty soft, aren't you? I, I, I guess, you said with a flustered tone. Why are you doing this? You asked. Because you're big and floofy, came a smug answer. S seriously? He laughed. <laughs> No, <laughs> because you're cute. Somehow this was worse. Don't tease me like that, you mumbled. Once again he laughed. <laughs> what do you think, I'm the only guy with a crush on you? He leaned up from you as you looked at him. Before Kirishima booped you on the nose. Guys get crushes and feelings for girls all the time. It's just that only the really manly ones actually follow through with it. Your heart began to beat faster. So! He swung himself around as he pressed both hands against the wall behind you. Your eyes focused entirely on his face, noticing the blush he had. He was really daring now, wasn't he? 
with a smirk, he asked. <laughs> Wanna go on a date? You could hear the anxiety in his voice, despite his smug demeanor. Then you realized something. Shyly, you replied. W was that hero anecdote su supposed to make me want to date a hero so I can... And leech off of them? He finished your sentence. Yeah. That's a trick question, and you know it. He leaned further into your personal space. Just one more question. You gulped. Is this just as awkward for you as it is for me? He immediately let his guard down. Man, I thought I'm the only one feeling it. He rolled back to his side. In truth, I never asked a girl out. I find you cute, yeah. And I want to help you, but trying to be this heartbreaker bad boy thing, you know, it's really annoying. Also, it makes me feel like an asshole. You smiled. Well, you said. I like this more. He looked at you. It is more honest. You knelt deeply and then exhaled. <sighs> Fine. Second try. He cleared his throat and took a more relaxed position. <clears throat> Yo, uh, I've been kind of stalking you for a few days now and I see you are getting bullied. I want to help you. How about we discuss this on a date? He winked and said, yeah, I like that much more. You smiled and simply said, yes. He sat up straight. S seriously? Y yes, w we, we, we can go on a date. Oh man, I thought I messed it up big time. <laughs> when? You asked. <laughs> How about now? You blushed. Let's finish today's school first. His eyes widened. Oh yeah, I totally forgot about that. And both of you now stood up. Well, uh... He put a hand on your shoulder. Wait for me in front of Claire's 1A's dorms after class is over, alright? Uh, wear something casual. I, I, I can't afford going to a fancy restaurant. You shuddered at the thought. I, I don't even want to go to a fancy restaurant. I, I, I wouldn't know what to talk about. He sighed with relief. I know, right? How does the mall sound like? You giggled. <laughs> that sounds lovely. Uh, but are you okay with going into more nerdy stores? He gave you a thumbs up. No problem. The bell rung and you turned to leave. Uh, see you then. You said before running off. Kirishima, on the other hand, remained in the hallway for a moment. Turning around... A guy from your class approached him. Dude, you fucking did it! He laughed. Yeah, said Kirishima mournfully. Look, dude, he started. I don't think I can go through with this. Your classmate took a step back. He was offended. What do you mean? What I mean is, sure, you set me up for this, but... I, I think I actually go on this date with her. You have bullied her enough. And she actually does seem nice. The guy shrugged. Whatever, Sharktooth. Your classmate took a step forward, attempting to go to class. But Kirishima sidestepped into him. If I hear about her complaining about any of you teasing her, about anything, you'll have to deal with more than just me. The two stared angrily into each other's eyes, but your questmate quickly broke under the pressure. Kishima's lips curled up into a grin. May I remind you, Bakugo is one of my best pals. Uh, fine, answered your bully before pushing the redhead out of the way. You didn't have to threaten me with a goddamn nuke. You got it two shoes. This is a hero school. 
Bar Kiyoshima. With a zero tolerance on bullying, you will get what you deserve if you keep doing this, asshole. And with that, the two boys went their separate ways. <laughs>